Cool. So hi, AJ. Uh, yeah, it was really nice of you to be on this call with me, the Zoom call. Um, yeah, I reached out to you because of my relations with you digitally about overcoming lust. And I was really inspired by your story, you know, because I think it's best to, it from, to come from your mouth. But I know your story about how you overcame lust. And obviously the reason why I want to speak to you is because of the book that I just finished writing um, called Chasing Love, Finding Christ. Because in today's world, we replace love with lust, you know, and you speak about that a lot, you know, about how, and you speak about different things like masculinity and um, marriage, you know, relationships. And those those are really important. Also, pur your purpose in life, you know, and the book that I've written has a lot to do with that. And a large part of that, of me going through that journey of staying away from lust completely, you know, through the help of Christ, is having some mentor who's been through it, you know, and um, who's experienced it. So, uh, yeah, just, I'll just throw the ball into your cut to kind of introduce yourself, uh, EJ, and everything like that. Big time. Well, first of all, you know, I appreciate you having me on. Um, this is definitely a, you know, a huge, you know, thing for individuals to listen to, especially if you're a man, possibly going through any you know, lust uh, that you want to tackle out in your life. Um, but yeah, so my name is DJ Madden, uh, kind of what I do. So I help men achieve sexual purity, uh, to lead a righteous marriage. Um, you know, I've been teaching this for about four years and, you know, it's, it's been a blessing to see people, you know, get a, a change and, you know, seeing Michael, you know, get a change, you know, seeing him actually grow. So I think that, you know, sexual purity is something that's highly important for men and obviously the reason why I want to speak to you is because of the book that I just finished writing um, called Chasing Love, Finding Christ. Because in today's world, we replace love with lust, you know, and you speak about that a lot, you know, about how and you speak about different things like masculinity and um, marriage, you know, relationships. And those, those are really important. Also, part of your purpose in life. You know, and the book that I've written has a lot to do with that. And a large part of that, of me going through that journey of staying away from lust completely, you know, through the help of Christ, is having some mentor who's been through it, you know, and who's experienced it. So, uh, yeah, just, I'll just throw the ball into your cut to kind of introduce yourself, uh, EJ, and everything like that. Big time. Well, first of all, you know, I appreciate you having me on. Um, this is definitely a you know, a huge, you know, thing for individuals to listen to, especially if you're a man, possibly going through any, you know, lust uh, that you want to tackle out in your life. Um, but yeah, so my name is DJ Madden, uh, kind of what I do. So I help men achieve sexual purity uh, to lead a righteous marriage. Um, you know, I've been teaching this for about four years. And, you know, it's, it's been a blessing to see people, you know, get a, a change and, you know, seeing Michael, you know, get a change, you know, seeing him actually grow. So I think that, you know, sexual purity is something that's highly important for men, um, you know, who, who want to live in a, in a way, you know, of purity and, you know, most importantly doing it for, you know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, and also, you know, I think that also an important thing is being able to be the man and the husband for your future wife. You know, it starts off with self-control. So that's why, you know, this, this subject is very sensitive. A lot of people are not really wanting to talk about the subject, but no. this is like the leading to get you closer to where you want to go to. So, but yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, um, it's really important. Like you said, it's quite a sensitive topic. And that's why I believe many um, young men are keeping it to themselves. Because it's almost like, what do I, who do I speak to? You know, um, who do I talk to about this without? being humiliated, you know, shamed for this. Or even, it can be the other way, even nowadays, it's almost like it's okay to talk about it. Exactly. Like in public and, you know, and people people don't see it that big of a deal. You know, like, oh, everybody does it, you know? So, okay. um, so um, how did you kind of come to that situation of overcoming uh, lust? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so kind of how, okay, so kind of how I overcame um, with lust, 
so back, kind of my backstory uh, for anybody watching as well. Um, before I even found out about SR and NoFap, it was, you know, I was in that ROTC program at my local college. Uh, so my plan was to go in the military. And kind of what happened was I was a lukewarm Christian. You know, I was a very lukewarm Christian. So I would go to parties. I would, you know, drink, you know, do those things. And, you know, again, it's all glory to God. I, was, I still was a virgin inside of, you know, that college college life. Um but after I get home being drunk, I, I get home being drunk or I get to the my dorm room being drunk, things like that. I used to always pray for strength and wisdom. God, I need strength and wisdom. You know, please give me strength and wisdom. And it was a prayer that my mom always used to, used to tell me, but I didn't know the significance in it. So kind of what happened was, um, you know, some scholarship uh, for athletics. Um, the problem was inside of the ROTC program. I was putting weight training and I was also I was also putting just my body above God, right? And obviously we're not supposed to put that above God. So kind of what happened, um, you know, I was one of the one of the you know the top athletics in inside of RTC and what happened was the second semester, my whole body kind of almost shut down. You know, it almost shut down. I almost got kicked out of the RTC. So the first semester was doing good. Second semester, I, I wouldn't like my my roommate had to pick me up, you know, pick me up from like the bathroom to my dorm room because I, I wouldn't I wasn't able to move my body. And so okay. falling back, you know, when I got back home, uh, I used to call my aunt, says mom, my aunt, man, my head is hurting, things like that. Why is my head hurting? Mm -hmm. And all those, you know, the you know all summer, every single month and almost every single week, we'd go to the hospital. And it got to the point where the doctors, they, they, thought, they thought my mom was crazy, like the super mom, like, oh, she's just overprotective of the son. You know what I mean? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was still, you know, active with my body and things like that. So doctors were looking at me. They said, okay, well, your blood's good, things like that. I said, there's still something wrong. There has to be something wrong. The, I want to say two weeks before I was about to go to my second semester, um, doctors found out that I had brain damage. Doctors found out that you know, by 27 years old, you wouldn't be able to walk, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to walk ever again. Um, that's what the doctors told me. So obviously, a young 18 year old, a young person who just turned 19, being able to hear that, you know, he's just not starting life. It's like, uh, you know, um, you know, at the time I was a lukewarm Christian, though. So deep down, I knew that God would not allow me to go through what I went through. Um, and suffer the consequences of, of, of you know, kind of was, I, I knew deep down, deep down that God would allow a way out, right? Yeah. Um, and so I've always known this Bible verse, Matthew 21, 22. It's crazy because I, I never read the Bible back then, but this is one of the verses I knew because we'd always used to have like a picture. And it would be a Matthew 21, 22. If you pray for anything, you have faith, you will receive it. So I remember my mom crying. She was, you know, she was over there. She was crying. Like, oh my gosh, no, you know, RTC guys called me up and where are you at? I couldn't make it. So I was so distraught, so down. And so that, this, it, it was 2018. So 2018, that fall, um, you know, that version of myself, I knew something had to change. I knew something had to change drastically. Um, because that's the time when I was going to real estate school. And what happened? Okay, what, this is what happened. I used to speak when I speak or when I, when I spoke out in class, I would slur my words and people would just laugh at me, you know, cause I thought I was joking, but yeah. it was actually the thing I was going through internally. And so that's where I found out about the thing called NoFap. Okay. Thing called NoFap. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. Found out about NoFap yeah. and for, for anyone watching, you know, NoFap is, is where you abstain from any form of, you know, lust, but you're still active with you and your wife, right? Um, and so I found out about that. I saw this guy. So this guy went like, you know, I think 90 days. You know, I think it was a guy named Seth Alexander. So I saw him and I was like, dude, that's that's amazing. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that's where I want to be. I was like, how, how in the world did he get that? You know, um, so I used to sit down on day zero just looking and I was like, dude, that's crazy. That's amazing. And then... Um, just fast forward, you know, 
January 4th of 2019, that's where I really prayed. It was crazy because I actually prayed right here, um, right next, right over here. Um, I, I was just down. I, I was so down. I said, dude, I, I give up. I was screaming at God, you know, because obviously, like, sometimes your prayers, sometimes it gets to a point where your prayers can be, you're, you're thinking about, like, you know, sometimes, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, you're praying, God, can you please, or Lord, sometimes, and again, I'm not saying it for, for anybody, but I'm pretty sure there's been somebody who's been screamed like screamed at God and that was me I screamed at God I said, God I need you to come through you know and I was just down broken and you know and I prayed that January 3rd and January 4th of 2019 you know that was my last time first and again all humble all glory to God you know last time that I ever you know relapsed so um, that's kind of the story and just a little backstory about it this SR journey is not just a journey where you get benefits and things like that. It's where you deny yourself onto the Lord with the fleshly things and what God will do, he's going to reward you at the end, you know, with a spouse, you know, or whatever the case may be with the business that you can work on, you can work on your craft. Um, and that's what he's done, done for me in my life in terms of finding an actual purpose, things like that. And I've been healed, man. I've been healed from, from the, the sickness that the doctor told me to, told me that I couldn't, you know, get rid of, you know, I was, I'm healed from that. And that's, again, all glory to God. And yeah, thank God. Thank God. Still, yeah. It's still going on, man. So, yeah. That was really good, man. Like, <laughs> um, I never get tired hearing that story because it's so it's such a good testimony. Um, and even with the um, multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. the MS, that's a M2, and usually people in this in that position and um, four years later they're not even better but you you have the glow like you're still physically fit and strong you know and, and, we, and i thank god for that you know it's such a good testimony it just shows the power of what happens when we do things the right way you know Amen. god's way oh, god's way you know um also um how, how did you experience how loss works you know like in school or in times when maybe you were at parties and you'd be, you know what I was talking about, looking at my body, just standing looking at my body, almost experience it, experiencing it out, an out of body experience in a way, you know, um, not in the occult way, but you know what I mean, like um, a, a spiritual experience. Like, mm -hmm. how do you experience that lust? Uh, how, so, are you saying, like, how did I discover it? How did I discover lust? Like, how, how did you know that, all right, so this is wrong? Okay. You know? Yeah, this yeah. is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say... It doesn't need, you don't need to go deep into it. Obviously, right? Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah you can almost, sense. like, make it quite conversational. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, okay, so uh, 2017, yeah. actually, you know, I still found out about sexual or NoFap, and I said, like, yeah, let me at least go seven days. You know, seven days mm -hmm. of doing this, and I, you know, back then I couldn't, I, you know, I didn't. Yeah, my mind didn't was not right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, my mind was you not right. There, but, you know, not, you know, first, first, first year in college, and without Christ, so it's like, okay, that was that. So you, you know, if you don't, if a man doesn't stand by anything, then he'll fall for anything in the world because it's, it's right yeah. there. There's no two ways about it. Um, that's why it's important to stand for Christ. You know, on the sexual purity journey, but. It, it actually, you know, it wasn't until my, my body, you know, my body um, was kind of, you know, it was kind of going in 2018, it was kind of going downhill, you know, mm -hmm. first time that I've ever experienced it. So I was, you know, if I want to get healed naturally from this, I got to do something different. And that's where I found out about SR and seam retention. And yeah. um, so I have to get on this if I want to mm -hmm. go on the natural path of wanting to cure this MS, wanting to get healed from my immune system. I need to practice this and in turn, you know, I'll be able to, you know, reap the benefits of it, you know? Um, mm. So it was, it was this thing that I needed to do. It is not like it was, it was God or not like God or I don't know where I'd be at without, without God, you know, to be honest and doing this. Yeah. Journey. Yeah, man. Like I, I can even imagine it for myself. Like, 
I feel like, and also, I feel like that was one of the only things in my life at the time where I was like, you know, oh. everything else in my life is sorted. Wow. You no, know, but just this one thing that is just at me, you know, yeah. was a real challenge, you know. And wow. I also believe that because I was able to conquer that part through Christ, a lot of sides in me that I tried to hide or suppress mm. by indulging in that content came out, you know, like anger or loneliness. Mm -hmm. you no, know, because we run to these things because we're trying to run away from the real problem. Yeah. You know, trying to hide it. You know, like for example, me, mine was loneliness, man. You know, loneliness wow. and feeling like you don't belong. So you try to deaden that through that content because it took you out of the reality of life at the time. Wow. You know? Exactly. And also anger as well. I noticed that and the Bible says that uh, um, a man who can rule his spirit is, is like a city without walls. City without walls. Broken exactly. down. You know? So um, looking at me, how can you, if you can't control the last one, but you can't control your anger. That's right. You know, so I, when I was younger, I'd have like these outbursts of wrath, you know? Wow. I don't have them anymore. But then I'll be, and after you'd be asking yourself that like, where am I getting all this energy from? You know, right. where's all this energy right. coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it, from your side, like, what do you think came to the forefront after you were, after you dealt with it through Christ? What really came to the forefront that you're trying to hide? Um, in terms of like, what? So, are you saying like, what was I trying to, like, what was I struggling with internally? I guess. Yeah, internally. Yeah, they yeah. tried to suppress. By yeah, watching those content, yeah, right. Like you, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Loneliness. It, it, it was loneliness. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, that that's the main thing. I would, I would say it's yeah, loneliness. Um, yeah. yeah. That yeah, I think I think that's the main thing, man. You know, loneliness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah man. I mean, Especially, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, following the narrow path is, is it's tough. There's no two ways about it. But mm -hmm. you know, like it's a path that we have to stay on. So, yeah, it's a path that we, we definitely have to stay on. I have, I know quite a few people who are trying to get through the situation. What's really good is that um, we we kept ourselves chaste, you know. But there's some people who have already indulged in sexual and fornication, mm -hmm. you know, and that is even harder for them <laughs> to be able to say no, you know. Exactly. So I, I believe, like you yourself and the books and all these contents writers who are bringing out all these things about nofap are really important yeah you know, especially for young men because we don't really have a voice especially even in social media we don't have much of a voice you know yeah. um but yeah um this this thing saying 10 minutes so i'll just go yeah. for like one more question cool um, the power of mentors you know whether that be christ yeah. or someone like yourself you know, what power does that have? Because many of us are trying to do it on our own strength. Big time. You know, yeah. but what power do mentors have? Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, it's a situation where it's like, I just now, I wouldn't say I just got out of it, but I've gotten a lot wiser with this topic because, you know, social media, first of all, social media, what it does to the mind is it gets the mind to want to think about, you know, um, okay, how can I fulfill my pleasure without seeking out a mentor? Because when you go to IG or TikTok or, you know, YouTube and you don't control, you know, your, your use and you go to a video that you feel like you like, it causes the mind to think, OK, I don't I don't really need, you know, other people to tell me anything because I'm satisfied with what I just viewed. You know, that's what that's what it does to the mind. And so social media can be, again, that that type of way or it can be the best thing possible. Um, so my personal thing on teachableness is, first of all, it's going to keep your youth. You know, just being humble and teachable. It's just sounds like a little kid how he has his eyes wide open and he asks that he asks his mom questions or his dad questions. Hey, um, what does this represent? What does that represent? And he, he just dares you know, like that. You know, that's that's the dream. The dream is not to get the award. The dream is to be teachable onto a mentor and enjoying that process. Because now, when you actually do get 
whatever it is that, that you need, you can say, okay, I, I don't think myself, I think this guy, I think this person, I think that person. And obviously with our relationship with Christ and as a whole, okay, following the word, following and standing up for, you know, Jesus Christ. And that's the main thing. Um, and that, that's what, that's what's going to keep us humble because let's say you do make it to the top of the mountain and there's so many self-improvement where a lot of, you know, a lot of people are trying to do it on their own. You know, we have this guy named David Goggins, right? Mm -hmm. he, did, he did it on his own, but we got to realize that that's very few, you know, very few, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. big hard work is not just going to do it. You got to be able to learn from someone who's better than you, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm. And that's the biggest key is just being humble and hungry. So, yeah, humble and hungry. Yeah, I love how you say that, humble and hungry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great, man. And thank you very much. Um, and also, EJ, it'll be really good for you to present your own uh, teaching program that you have as well to the people. Yeah, hundred percent, man. So, um, yeah. So if you know if you're if you're a young man um, who is struggling, again, you know it's always good to be again humble and hungry. Um, but it's also good to follow a correct system that's going to get you that restoration. And if you do want to get this, uh, just, you know, you can follow my IG page, um, possibly put it, you know, I guess in the comments or in the description box, uh, E Monster Sold, and you can shoot me a DM and we can see um, if you are a good fit for the training program. Um, but yeah. Yeah, 100% saying check it out. Uh, he helped me. Um, and definitely, he will definitely help you as well in Jesus' name. Um, so that's really good, man. Yeah, could we do a prayer real quick before we do finish it. this up? Yeah, so good. I'll do the prayer. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us here to hear your word and to show your power uh, to defeat lust. And though we struggled with it, you're able to bring it to pass our cries out to you you know our prayers our long-term prayers where well, we wanted you to deliver us from it and we thank you lord for de delivering us from it i also want to thank you lord that you orchestrated it and i've been watching ej for many years and he orchestrated it where i'll be able to speak to him when i was bold enough and you gave me the boldness to be able to present to others in literary work about defeating lust the lord jesus christ and I thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done. Thank you, Lord, that this meeting went well. And we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord, that we'll go away with more. And your spirit, your Holy Spirit, dwell within us. We're able to be a testimony to others so they also can be saved. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right, cool, EJ. Thanks very much. I appreciate the, um, for you taking out your time to. Uh, do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hundred percent, brother. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, God bless you. And I uh, hope anybody who has watched it got you know, some value out of it. Sure. Sure. Hundred percent. And also, it'll be cool if you can uh, send me like your address and everything, so I can ship you a book, a free copy as well, so you can kind of check it out as well. Really Come cool. on, Al. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All, right, EJ. All right, All right, brother. Thanks very much, man. Yes, sir. Take care.